Hello and welcome to 100 Days of Summer, I'm Christian Page. So today we're going to debunk the whole concept of real time, for things to happen in real time. Now it's a term that many people have said and you hear it often said about, you know, in, in terms of a technology context or in a broadcast context, you know, things happening in real time, live. Well, I'm really sorry to say, unless you know how to time travel, Something to happen in parallel, simultaneously, in real time, is just simply not possible. It's true, we can get things to happen in as near real time as possible, given especially the fact that light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second, so we can move things pretty quickly, you know, with fiber optics and lasers and electronics. But the reality of things happening in real time is actually a bit of a misnomer. And it's one that actually trips us over many in many times, um, especially when we're thinking about you know, defining a scope. And where does this link back? Well, in, the rea in providing some of the services that we need to ensure that the broadcast goes out and hits the television and in as close to live as possible, we need to make sure that the latency, all of that time that adds up into everything that happens in between that signal reaching your television or the, the viewer's television at home or on their device, is m as little as possible. We want to make that, that latency as small as possible. This is why real time becomes quite critical. And so when we're defining a scope, we need to think about it in the context of well, what are all those components going to do and how will that impact latency. And this becomes even more important when we're dealing with, with and a good example is the televisions that we have on the field of play. Now quite often you'll see them um, at, at a big event uh, for the broadcast commentary positions. Now these need to be displayed so that what's happening on the field of play is actually happening in front of the, the broadcaster so that they can then actually translate that information into their commentary for the people back home. Now imagine, and I've seen this happen, where systems have been devised, developed, deployed into a, into a sport venue where the latency hadn't been considered. And all of a sudden, a ball gets hit on the field of play, and then a few seconds later, it appears on the television being hit. So you can imagine the confusion this creates, or the, 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 the issues it creates, when trying to do a commentary in real time of what's happening. So this is where it becomes really critical, and you'll see a lot of people say, okay, yes, it's in real time, but it's really important to define what that means in terms of real time. What does real time mean to you? Because it can mean anything up to 30 seconds for some, for some systems. So it's really important to understand that. Again, going back to defining the scope, how important is real time and what does that real time mean to you? For some, and us in the broadcast and especially for systems like Diva, we're talking microseconds because we don't want any latency as what we want as minimal as possible. But for other systems like CATV where you've got TVs around a venue and it's just for entertainment purposes or just engaging an audience at a, at a concessions kiosk, latency becomes less of an issue. That's a little bit of a debunking story today, uh, talking about real time. Um, I'm Christian Page, great to have you with me. Thanks for joining us on this journey. If you've got any comments or questions or any more technical deep dive questions like that, or if you would like to know more about real time and how it impacts certainly the different deliverable elements of the technology scope, please just drop it in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer. Great to have you with me and bye for now.